In this Unity tutorial, number 4.1, uh, we're going to be making our NPC a little more complicated. We're going to give them uh, a little quest for the player to do uh, that involves our collectibles. So the way this is going to work is, um, so we can already go up and have them show a line, right? Um, so what we want to do is we want to, uh, one, uh, when you approach the NPC, we want them to ask for collectibles. Uh, two, um, if you have enough collectibles, um, we want to give the player the yellow key. Um, so, uh, and we want them to say something else. So, um, so what we need to do is we need to add a, um, a couple things. We need, um, a line asking for the collectible. So we need a, a string asking for collectibles. Uh, we need a string um, thanking you and we need to make the key appear okay um, we need a reward uh, so um, let's uh, let's think about this so so what what do we need oh, just wait a second. so um, we have our NPC script right so we need to be able to check the collectible manager if there's enough collectibles, right? Uh, we also need to be able to make the key appear, okay? So we're going to need references to these two things. Um, so let's go to Unity. Let's open up our uh, NPC script. And let's make some changes here so this stuff can work. So first thing uh, we need is we need two lines. So we have a dialog line. So let's add a second line. So public string um, completed line. And we'll change the name of the dialog line to the ask line. So we also need um, a bool for is quest completed. And we'll set that equal to false because it's not. Um, so notice we're getting this red dialog line here. That means we have an error. So um, let's just delete this whole line for now. So when you leave, we still want the dialog to, to disappear. Um, so um, we also want the, we want a reference to the key, but we just, we don't need a reference to the key exactly. We need a reference to the game object the key is on. So we can make that appear. So we'll just make a reference to the public game object, and we'll call it the reward. And then we can later swap out the key for anything. Uh, anything that's a game object, we can make appear. Um, so on trigger enter, um, we want to check if is quest completed. So if quest completed equals equals true, then we want to uh, say dialog text dot text equals completed line. So that means uh, if the quest is completed, if it's true, um, the the text uh, will show the completed line. Uh, else, and I'm putting else after the curly brackets of the if. So if is tied to else. So if else, and then else gets its own curly brackets. Um, dialog text dot text equals ask line okay so if the quest isn't completed they'll ask you for whatever it is they want okay um, so uh, we need to be able in order to see if the quest is completed we need to be able to check the collectible manager so let's make a reference to the collectible manager we can do that um, above the dialogue so we'll say public collectible manager manager okay um, 
So uh, here's our collection count. So it's not public, so we can't reference it. Um, so what I want to add is a method here, um, and this is a little weird, um, but we can add a method that's public bool. So instead of void, our method type is going to be bool, um, and we'll call it remove from collection. Okay. Um, so this is our new method. It's a bool type. Now we've never done this before. What this means is, since it has a type that isn't void, this needs to return something. So we're going to say return false. Okay. Actually, let's delete that. But if, if we don't have a return uh, and we check, we're going to get an error. So this error is saying not all code passed return a value. So uh, let's let's fix that. So um, first, we we want to know how many to remove from collection. So we're going to create an argument called amount. So we're going to remove, we're going to try and remove a certain amount from collection. Okay. Um, so we're going to say if collection count, that's how many you've collected, is greater than or equal to amount. So, so if we have more in our collection than the amount we're trying to remove, we're going to return true. Uh, well, we are going to return true. Else, if it's less than amount, or um, we're going to return false. Now, um, if we have enough, we should also remove them. So we're going to say collection count equals collection count minus amount. Okay. So um, when we run this method, um, we're going to take this amount and we're going to see if it's if we have enough in our collection count. If we do, then we're going to remove the amount from our collection count and say we were able to remove from collection. So true. Or else we're going to say false. Okay. So now we can use this method remove from collection on our NPC. So if it's the player, and we're going to go before this if. So before we check if the quest is completed, we're going to say if if manager, that's our collectible manager, dot remove from collection, uh, and the amount is going to be, um, well, um, let's see. Let's add an int to be our amount. So required collectibles. Okay. So, um, so if we can remove the required collectibles from our collection, we're going to say is quest completed equals true. Okay. And that's the one equal sign. So that assigns true to this. The two equal signs checks to see if these are the same. Okay. Um, so, so it's true. So if it's true, we want to, we want to ask the line and we also want to set the reward dot set active to true. So this is going to make something appear. So unlike our door and our key and our collectible, which we're setting active to false, we want to set it to true. Now, um, another thing is we don't want our reward to be visible um, when the game starts. So let's add our start method back in, which just runs when the game starts. I'm going to say reward dot set active false. Okay. Um, finally, um, well, let's just run this for now uh, and see if this works. So let's go to Unity. And if we click on our NPC, we should have a bunch more stuff going on. So we need to set up the ask line. If you bring me three blue cubes, I'll give you a key. Thank you for the cubes. So, uh, when you walk up to him without any cubes, it'll say, if you bring me three blue cubes, I'll give you a key. Uh, and then once you've brought the cubes, it'll say, thank you for the cubes. And so the required collectibles is three, right? Uh, this NPC wants three blue cubes, so we need three. So the reward is going to be the key. So where's the key? So here's the key. I'm going to move it over next to the NPC so you can grab it, okay? So right when it appears, you'll know that who gave it to you. 
So let's take the key and let's drag it into reward. So now the key game object is assigned to the reward on the MPC. Okay. Um, so we also need a reference to the collectible manager. So here's the collectible manager. Let's drag that in here. So now uh, we have a reference to the collectible manager. We have our key set up. We have how many keys we need. We actually don't have enough collectibles um, to complete this quest. So let's uh, either control D or right click and duplicate to make some new collectibles. So there's two, duplicate, and there's three. And that's all we need. I'm actually gonna make a fourth just to make the math more clear, okay? So we have four collectibles. Uh, this NPC wants three, so let's try it out. So let's hit play. Everything's running, zero cubes collected. So let's walk over to the NPC first. If you bring me three cubes, I'll give you a key. If you bring me three cubes, I'll give you a key. Great. One cube, two cube, three cube, four cube. Go back. Thank you for the cubes. There's the key. Uh, so it didn't subtract, ah, it did subtract, but we didn't update the display text. So if I click on the collectible manager, uh, well, it doesn't show that anymore. We got rid of that, but it, it did subtract. Um, but uh, so the way I can show that, so I picked up the key, now I can go through the door. So let's, let me show this. So if I go one, two, three, take this over to him, get the key. Okay. So it says I still have three, but that's wrong. Cause if I pick up this, it'll be set to one. Um, and the reason is if we go back to our script, uh, if we go to the collectible manager in the add to collection, we update the count text collection.toString after we change the collection count. So all we need to do is do the same line after we update the amount here. So we'll say count text dot text equals collection count dot to string. Now, um, so that, uh, that line right here, repeated right here, we'll just update the amount when we run it. So there's one other problem that we're gonna have. So let's collect our three cubes. If we go and bring them to him, so now we have um, so now we have zero cubes. We gave him this guy the cube. So we grab our key and we leave. Now here's an issue. When you walk up to him again, he's going to give you another key. So every time you walk up, because you've completed the quest, he's just going to keep giving you keys. Now we only want this guy to have one key. That's weird. Okay. Um, so let's go back to our script. Also. Um, well, there's two, there's two things. So we have to do this check. So first let's say bool turned in cubes equals false. Okay. So, um, here we're saying, um, if you can remove it, we want quest complete equals true. Let's also say turned in cubes equals true. Um, and here, uh, let's add an or. So an or is these two vertical lines, which is shift and then backslash. It's above your enter key and below your backspace. Um, or, and that means or. Uh, nope, and we don't want or. We want and. So and is two amp ampersands, which is shift seven. And turned in cubes equals false. It's equivalent to false. So this. If this is true, which it gets assigned the first time we complete it, uh, we don't want to. We don't want to remove. Oh wait, that's still gonna remove it. Okay. So we need to check if turned in cubes happens before we try and remove them. So if turned in cubes equals equals false, this is gonna be a good test. So my first curly bracket goes there, and my second curly bracket goes here. Okay. So also, we need to check before we set the reward active, we need to check to make sure, um, actually, let's, let's move this down. So let's move turned in cubes equals true to after we actually get our reward. So if turned in cubes equals true, and then we, we, we don't want to set this, but we want to make sure that we can't set a reward. So we want to say if turning cubes equals equals false, then, uh, so by putting this if statement around turning cubes equals true, that guarantees this will only run once. It will only set the active true once because as soon as this code runs, 
turned in cubes get set equal to true. And uh, uh, so our reward won't get set true again. Also, um, our collection won't get removed from again if uh, because this is equal to false. So this is a, there's a lot going on here, um, but it is making sure that our player can't uh, get robbed, basically, and doesn't get multiple keys, because they only need one key. So we get our cube, grab the key, open the door, got another cube, uh, thank you for the cubes. So, and just, just to double check, let's make some more collectibles. So now I have, have enough collectibles to collect more than one key. So I'll just grab all six, five, so I have eight, get my key, and notice coming back does not remove more cubes, okay? Um, but we can open our door. So that is our quest. Um, I'm sure this could be done a little cleaner, but, uh, and if you want to try and clean it up, go for it. Um, and when we get more in depth, we'll definitely do this in a cleaner way. But um, for now, uh, I think this is uh, the best way to do it. Um, also, notice our reward is getting hidden um, when the game starts. So if I, if I turn that off and I hit play, notice um, the key's already out there, right? So we can just grab it. So we need to make sure that key is hidden before we turn in our quest. So that's a quest. That's an NPC with a quest. Um, yeah.